Hi, I'm George Wallace. I am the general manager of the Orlando Fringe, and I'm the vice president of CAF, which is the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals, which includes 28 festivals in North America. Um, most of them are in Canada, five are in the States, um, and I will give you a lot more information on that. So really, I'm here to represent the um, Canadian side. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Michael Marinaccio. I am the uh, festival producer of the Orlando International Fringe Festival, and because George is representing CAF, I am here representing the Orlando Fringe, which is the oldest fringe in the United States, going into our 23rd year in 2014. Uh, I'm Annika Janssen from the Amsterdam Fringe Festival, um, and we are now in our ninth year. I'm the artistic director. Um, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Julian Caddy. I'm managing director of Brighton Fringe. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Barry Churchwoods. I'm the venues and companies manager for the Edinburgh Festival Fringe Society and the, the organisation that supports and the infrastructure of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. You're really? here, so I assume you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Kevin Charles Patterson, and I'm the producer of the San Diego Fringe Festival in California, and we're one of the country's newest festivals. We just had our very first year. Yeah. Uh, my name is David Ambrogi. Uh, I'm from the Roma Film Festival to represent it. We, we just finished the second year, so we're yeah. pretty new <laughs> as well. Um, that's all. I told them to do short answers. So, if you could just tell us a little bit, I don't mind you start, but tell us a little bit about your fringe, um, how it differs to Edinburgh, not you, Barry, obviously. Um, what kind of events are popular, what works, what doesn't, if, if there is a structure like that, um, and what kind of events sell well? Is that true? Anyone want yeah? Um, Okay, that's, that's a loaded question for me because, like I said, there are 20, um, 28 festivals within, within CAF. One of the really unique things about that is we follow the model that uh, we pay 100% of all box office receipts back to the artist. So we're all nonprofits and we don't keep any of the money. Um, we try to keep the application fees really low. There is a touring circuit um, where you can fill out an application and submit it um, online and um, you would be an international um, component. We pick five um, from around the world and five from, from Canada um, every year, and you can pick up to 10 festivals, and you're guaranteed a slot to perform in those festivals. So um, it's a very lucrative summer tour. Um, it starts off in February in New York City, um, and then we kick off the official tour in Orlando in May, and then that tour goes all summer um, and it is just ending right now. And it's everything from really small festivals, um, like some representatives here, um, to the Edmonton Fringe, which is the largest festival in North America. So um, it, it's a very, very unique opportunity to get to um, promote yourself in North America. Um, and there are some great festivals in the States, um, San Francisco, um, Orlando, um, there's one in Colorado, Indianapolis, New York, um, and um, in Canada, it's from East Coast to West Coast, so there's a lot of opportunities to um, perform. Uh, well, Orlando Fringe is a member of CAF, uh, so we use the CAF model, which is we are unjury, uh, which means that there is no curation, it is all by lottery, so you submit, and uh, we draw your, literally draw your names out of a hat. Um, but we do reserve 25% of our Slots for international artists, 25% for national across the United States, and 50% for local to Orlando and Central Florida. Uh, so if you're an international artist, it's uh, actually easier to get in. There's, there's less competition, uh, and we have uh, a, a number of spots put aside. We are uncensored, of course. Uh, I don't think you can be a fringe without being uncensored. Uh, and we give 100% of the ticket sales back to the artist. So uh, we're, we're definitely a, a, a very different model than in Edinburgh, all of our venues are festival are, are festival managed venues. Um, we provide technicians for every uh, sh artist, every show. Uh, we have a uh, full box office, and every, every we we take care of pretty much everything uh, in there. It's all very centralized. 
uh, in a place called Lock Haven Park, which is a cultural park. So all of our venues are right there together. Our big lawn is right there together. Last year we had 101 shows uh, as part of the festival, which helps us to not get too big and spread our audience too thin and make sure that our artists are getting uh, audiences. We last two years we've done about 50% of our available houses sold. Uh, and pretty much good shows do well. Um, we're also known as the, the gay fringe uh, in the U.S. because uh, we, come right before, we come right before gay days in Orlando. Uh, so, um, so gay acts, LBGT acts do really, really well in, in uh, Central Florida. But uh, we're just looking for something different. Uh, you know, anything interesting, um, out there, edgy. They want as, as different from Disney as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> and to piggyback on Mike, um, to, to the second half of, of Holly's question was what sells well and what's, what's unique. One of the really unique things about um, a lot of the cat festivals, not every single one, we have this component, I know um, Edmonton does, um, so many of them do, it's called Kids Fringe, um, which are um, kids specific, family friendly. Um, free entertainment on the weekend. So um, we have everything from Blue Man Group to bounce houses to educational components. So um, we have it off premise. So um, if you have a children's show or a family friendly show, or you can do something that is um, um, aimed at children from four to 12, um, then that helps you supplement your show because you can go perform on the free outdoor stage with the children and then promote your show and you sell more tickets that way. And that's really common on on the Canadian and U.S. festivals, and I don't know if there is anything like that over here, but um, you know, it, it's a really great way to promote your your show. Are we mixing yeah. it up? Or are yeah, we go okay. Um, Amsterdam Fringe, I think uh, one of the big uh, differences with Edinburgh is uh, we do have open access, but uh, we don't program stand-up comedy. That's the one genre that we don't uh, get into the fringe at Amsterdam. Uh, we are more focused on performance art, live art, uh, mixing of genres. So there's a lot of edgy uh, work in Amsterdam, which also suits the city. Um, uh, another thing, we are now in our ninth year, we have about 80 uh, groups on the Amsterdam Fringe Festival. Uh, what we also do, we, have, uh, we are um, part of the World Fringe Alliance with Brighton, Edinburgh, uh, Brainstown, South Africa, uh, New York, LA. Perth, Perth, Adelaide, Adelaide, Edinburgh, Hollywood. Prague. Prague. <laughs> so um, yeah, we we exchange shows, so shows that do really well at Edinburgh or at Brighton or Prague uh, tour. So we sort of try to get artists moving, get really good shows moving around the world. Um, we also um, provide locations for you, uh, so we we run the locations. We decide what's getting in there. Uh, we also provide technicians. You get 80% of the box office. 20% uh, usually goes to the venue, not to the festival itself. So that's the deal we have with the venues. Um, we have a small entrance fee, uh, which is not very much. We also provide uh, for a lot of artists accommodation. And we try to you know, uh, help you out with airport and stuff like that. Um, and it's, uh, it's a really, uh, Amsterdam Fringe, I think, is a really nice atmosphere because it's uh, central. There's a, a spiegel tent at the uh, Leipzig Line, which is quite central. Um, quite central, it is the center. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, it's a, lot, a nice mixture of people going there. There's a lot of uh, uh, programs coming to check out new things. It's really no known in the Netherlands for putting on new work. And so programs go there and from the Netherlands and Flanders and Germany to get stuff. Hello, um, Brighton Fringe is, uh, I think, on my feet, uh, after Edinburgh, it's the largest arts festival in England. No, Edinburgh's not in England. We had this year 734 shows um, in about 185 different venues um, across the city. It runs for four weeks. Um, there is a, a, it's a similar setup to, to Edinburgh in terms of you paying a registration fee. Um, we run a central box office. Um, your relationship is mainly with your venue, 
Um, so you, you, you'd be starting by looking for a venue and then you'd be registering with the fringe. Um, the, uh, what else to say, the, the, all genres, uh, it's completely open access. Um, the runs tend to be shorter than Edinburgh. Um, you tend to be coming up to perform for a few, like anything between three and five performances. If you've got a show which is, which is likely to sell out uh, across, across the board, then you're probably doing a longer run. Um, but it's more the exception rather than the rule. Um, every Saturday there's a Fringe City, which is an outdoor showcase similar to the Royal Mile. Um, and uh, this year we had two um, family picnics um, in the uh, Pavilion Gardens, which was very nice when it wasn't raining, um, which was once. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't always rain. Um, otherwise, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lovely city. Um, wouldn't you agree? I totally agree. Well, Holly used to run it. Holly started it. <laughs> Good. Um, we're also part of the World Fringe Alliance, and we, we're, we're building, uh, this is a fairly new organisation, which isn't really an organisation, it's more like a collection of, a, 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 an alliance of the willing, to use George Bush. Um, uh, <laughs> it went a crowd over. <laughs> cities in the United States, if you don't already know that. Uh, we're back to back with a couple other festivals. People can fly to the United States, or fly to California, do Hollywood Fringe Festival, then right after that is San Diego Fringe Festival, and then right after that is Santa Cruz Fringe Festival. So you can set up a little West Coast tour. Um, and I think that one thing that's unique for us this next year is that it will be our national theater conference in San Diego. So every major theater in our country will be uh, in San Diego for a conference just before our Fringe Festival. So we'll do pre-festival activity. So participants of the Fringe Festival could do uh, pre-festival performances and get exposure for the, from uh, or to the national theaters that are visiting. And we're open access, we have low production fees, we manage the venues just like Amsterdam and Orlando. Um, we can help with billeting. Uh, what else? That's it for now. Yeah. Okay, Roma, hello to everybody. Again. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> It's the second year, we just finished it. Uh, so we are going up day after day, years after year. So I want to talk about what just happened. Uh, that is pretty different from other. We talk about peculiarity. Yes, our fringe is uh, inside a park. It's like a small theater world. So it's just one location with three venues. Uh, you can find uh, three different times uh, you can find nine different shows per day. So it's inside Roman, the center, uh, nice neighborhood, student neighborhood. So the villa is a villa from 19th century, so it's very fascinating. And uh, so once you get there, you find nine different shows to see. One, mm, and next by, mm, I mean, next by, uh, all around the villa. Uh, so, uh, it's pretty really this maybe it's our peculiarity. Um, then yes, it's the second year we, we had a lot of sex, thirty-five thousand presents in uh, thirty days. Um, and uh, yes, it's not open access, unfortunately because we have this lot, so we have to make a selection. Uh, because we have a lot of requests, and Italy doesn't like uh, lotteries. <laughs> In general, it smells bad a lottery, so it's bad. Uh, and uh, so, yes, we make a selection. The 
there is a fee to pay, and then uh, we care, I have to say that we care a lot about the companies, uh, the one who is worse, uh, even about their future. So taking the fringe as a starting point, and we follow them after the fringe. It's not something, you know, it's not just an experience that we give that to them, uh, or you know, a brand to sell. But it's something more. I mean, we care about the future. We a lot of of, uh, of theater ask for companies to fill up their bills, uh, and we suggest the companies. We follow them. We we make them uh, during all the years. And uh, it, I mean, we started last year, and we still go on with the first year company, uh, with uh, also with uh, the press. Uh, with the communication. I mean, anytime <coughs> they make a show, we communicate to the to our channels, to, to the world, <laughs> to the world website, uh, and then, or the newspapers that they are doing th their work. So it's something that is a, like a relationship that goes on, days by day. Um, and this probably, uh, Yes, what we want to tell about uh, about Roma Fringe, Roma Fringe Festival to the companies is something, uh, it's like uh, a mutual assistance <laughs> yeah. that, that starts. Yeah. And then, yes, we have an uh, international part. Uh, this year we, we open it. Uh, so we have guests from uh, uh, Stockholm, from uh, London, uh, New York. And we exchange it, so our company is good there. The, the company in Italy, I mean, the, mostly are, are from Italy, of course, because then there is also the language. So the international show must be performing arts or something that, with, with, with few words, because unfortunately this is uh, what, what, what we can permit to ourselves. But is uh, anyway is a. Uh, um, we, we had a, 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 a good response, uh, and uh, we are looking forward to make uh, it bigger. The next year, we want to bring all the neighbors uh, together. So, using the street for buskers, uh, the pubs for stand-up comedy. We didn't have stand-up comedy till now, and the music too, indoor. Because yes, I, I forgotten to tell you that uh, the stage are outdoor. Fortunately. The weather is good in Roma, so we don't have to care too much about the rain. It rains just once in 30 days, so <laughs> maybe, maybe more about the World Cup for the next year. The, the football World Cup will be a problem, so we have to, then for next year, the schedule will be probably longer, with a lot of holes. Uh, in parallel with the final semi-final <laughs> part of the World Cup because uh, otherwise it would be a problem. Uh, <laughs> in, in terms of um, performers coming over to your festivals, what kind of, um, Annika, you touched on the support that they get, sometimes <coughs> help with flight and accommodation, which sounds too good to be true almost. Uh -huh. But um, what, in terms of support, what can performers expect when they come to your festival? Who wants to start? Julian? Uh, okay. Um, we have great support. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's why you do a quick answer. <laughs> three, three of the supporters sitting at the back there. Um, put your hands in the air. Um, you've got um, Rachel, who will be shortly leaving, so this is your last opportunity to see her. Each of, you, each of you give her a hug. Um, there will be somebody new starting, but uh, the participant services team are there to help to, to, to help match up the right venue with the right uh, the right show um, we are also working with international agencies at the moment it's, it started predominantly with uh, South Africa um, I've started talking with the Netherlands um, to find to, to match up companies that want to come over to specifically um, but also I, we're, we're working more closely with the Arts Council working with um, different independent funding bodies to help um, facilitate companies to come. Otherwise, it tends to be the French festival model, unfortunately, um, where you pay a fee to be part of it. Um, but we do provide all the support that we can. And then Rosie there, 
uh, and Chris uh, involved in the marketing and the PR, the press, the website and everything. So we, we, we provide all of the, the bits and pieces to go around it which help in the end save you money, I hope. Country, um, then you it will facilitate. No, not 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 all countries um, <coughs> can get in without a visa, um, but it certainly facilitates that process. Thank you. Maybe Barry, you could talk about because even though people, you guys are here, so you're obviously very proactive about what you're thinking in terms of your futures. But there might be some things that you haven't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the French society exists for the exact same reason it existed um, in the, the early and late 50s when it was formed in response to the festival. It's a support anyone who wants to take part. It's universal support. There are like a few different strands. We we work as ambassadors for the festival as a whole. We, you all know we don't promote anybody's work over anybody else's. Um, we do that by um, getting information out and letting people know about it. We run a box office, so we sell tickets on your behalf. Um, we create the centralised programme, so as everyone knows what's going on. Um, we have um, probably, at this stage, the, the things that would be most interesting to you, I would assume, would be our media team who can help you uh, tailor your marketing and your communications about your work to get your audiences in, in our arts industry office. Um, every year about a thousand arts industry professionals accredited with the Fringe Society. Um, and again, we are an impartial organisation, but we do a thing called um, fact-based short leading. So when someone comes in and goes, I want a, a Hungarian three-piece that is looking to tour South Africa, we go, oh well, that one. Um, so we'll, we'll help you get there. Um, it's a, there's a ticketing service as well, so they can see the work we do that through there. I mean, overall, it's um, pretty much all festivals offer the same services, I think. It's all about making sure that your experience is good. and. Our work is more and more being tailored to trying to get past the being the biggest arts festival in the world and about being the best arts festival in the world, which is what we all do. Uh, you push your artists, you give them opportunities to tour onwards, um, which means they give a shit about the work that they bring. Mm -hmm. and, and in, in itself, in turn, you know, good work develops audiences, it develops opportunities. So. Thank you. And there's an amazing programme in Fringe Central, so. Yeah, so yeah, French Central, this, this, this building here, it's our participant events um, centre. Um, there are 150 different um, sessions happening here that's part of your registration fee. And so people always go, they're free, they're not, you've paid for it. If you've registered your show, you have access to it. If you have re a show registered, but all your company members, all your event members can come in here. And we have everything from, um, you know, we had an opening address from Mark Ravenhill, Ravenhill, Ravenhill. Uh, to, you know, like yoga classes for people who are about to have nervous breakdowns. So, um, you know, so, you know, so, you know. And this. Uh, so, yeah, uh, well, I'll talk a little bit about Orlando, and it kind of applies to most of the CAF festivals, too. Well, pretty much all of them. Um, we all provide billeting for artists traveling, so that means we will house you with a host. Uh, we have an amazing network of hosts in Orlando uh, over 22 years. Almost every house has a pool, many hot tubs, uh, and you can't really turn around. Yeah. He's not joking. He got I'm, me my own pool house I uh, when I went to Florida. Um, and, 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 and you, couldn't, you can't really turn around without running into an artist who works at a theme park, so if you want theme park tickets, that's all. Um, we, uh, we also provide low, low registration fees, 100% of the ticket sales back. Um, we do not uh, assist with uh, visas, and that tends to be our biggest issue with, uh, with, with touring artists internationally. Um, I can't advise you on any, anything like this, but uh, some of our artists do just uh, put on a Mickey Mouse shirt and go <laughs> This, is, the, this uh, is actually being broadcast. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, honestly, uh, we, 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 we uh, can help kind of advise you in the, in the, in the visa process, but we don't. Uh, it's a very complex and, and difficult thing uh, for international artists. So what makes it worthwhile would be normally doing the whole tour. So if you're getting your, your, your work visa in the United States, then coming and hitting other U.S. festivals, going to Canada and doing the North American festival, and that way you'll make it worth your while financially to do uh, 
uh, all the all the jump through all the hoops that uh, you need to jump through. So um, the uh, other things we do for artists, well, the, the workshops. One thing that I think that um, is the most beneficial, and most of the calf ones do, is um, we do a marketing 101. We we want if we want to see you guys succeed because if you're succeeding, our festival is succeeding at the end of the day um, from a business perspective. So. Um, we help you promote, we um, send you uh, all of the list of all of the, the press releases. Um, Orlando is one of the few festivals um, where we can actually guarantee that every show that's there is going to get a review in a publication. Um, the Orlando Sentinel and the Orlando Weekly, which are the um, two largest papers in, in Central Florida, and Watermark, which is the LGBT newspaper that covers the entire state of Florida. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be a good review, but you're going to get a review. Um, so that's that's one of the things that our artists really like. Um, and another thing that that we do, um, we have Critics Choice Awards because a lot of a lot of artists are looking to get um, something that they can put on the, the poster. We were the Critics Choice, or we won um, we won a Fringe Award. So that's well, we have, yeah, we actually have three sets of awards. Uh, one one of them is, is fest festival sponsors, and most mostly they're just fun awards. We don't really like to say best of because we don't like to show favoritism mm -hmm. as an organization. The Critics Choice Awards is run by the critics. We have no say in the who wins the awards, and it's totally based on what the critics uh, decide. And then there's also the Audience Choice Awards, which are by audience voting. So you have sort of a lot of shots to get awards. And as first on the circuit, that's something that you put on your poster and you take with you throughout the rest of the circuit. And as you continue to get those five-star reviews and all that stuff, then you have a poster that's covered by the end of the tour, you know, hopefully, if you have a good show. <laughs> um, well, I think uh, what what is, is uh, interesting what you say, say about we don't like to hand out best stuff. We do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because also, uh, uh, we have like, uh, you've got the fringe open access and then you've got a, a, a few shows that are marked best off. Edinburgh, best of New York, best of Amsterdam. Uh, just to also give artists the opportunity to, if they've done well at other fringe festivals. You know, I, I sometimes, you know, I am on a jury, but uh, a lot of times, the um, people like from New York or the, the way they do awards pick the show, so we get the show that the New Yorkers like the most. Not that I like the most, but that the New Yorkers, and that's interesting for people to see. Um, which also gives uh, those artists the opportunity to actually move on from the fringe um, and and get a, get on to the next level. So we're trying to make that work. Um, I think, yeah, what is. What is interesting, I think, in, in uh, Amsterdam also, there's a lot of expats and tourists, and basically everybody that's Dutch speaks English. <laughs> so the language is not really a big barrier. If you have like a very text-based show, very dense, then it will be, you know, at a certain point, uh, very high standard English will be difficult, but usually it's not a problem. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, we also provide workshops. We have workshops prior to the Fringe Festival on how to do business, how to do PR, uh, how to get your network going on. We also have uh, promoters' uh, breakfast, breakfast at the Amsterdam Fringe Festival, but it's slightly more matched. We like to match promoters to certain artists that will have something in common. Uh, you know, if a stand-up comedian starts talking to me about bringing a show to Amsterdam, there's really no point because we don't program that. Uh, so it's not like speed dating on acid with <laughs> going like this. Um, it's more like uh, um, you know the promoters uh, we just match them and they literally make a sandwich together with peanut butter or cheese, and that's, that's <laughs> it's like very you know match made. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything for this. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, we, as I said, um, we host international guests, but they must be a guest. So uh, we accept proposal and then we consider it and to the one selected. Uh, we offer accommodation and the 100% of the ticket, as the other shows as well. Otherwise, they can have the, the regular process through the selection, 
throughout the Spain and the rest. Um, we prefer probably to we prefer to, to, to have them as a guest so they can we can care more about the promotion and and the rest because it's something different. Uh, international theatre uh, is is pretty different from Italian theatre. Uh, I mean, for what we have seen, so it's even better that we put aside. And so this is this is the, the theatre that you know, and this is something else that probably you will like. So that's what. Thank you. So um, some of you have kind of set the scene a little bit about your festivals in how, how it works, but what can you tell us um, about what's unique and what can you tell the audience here about your festival that they can't find out online? So what's the kind of atmosphere like, you know, how does it feel to be there? I would say that what makes us unique what is the theatre conference that's going to be taking place and that's just such a major event for artists. Annika brought up um, taking the shows to a whole other level. Uh, when you've got the major producers from all across the country and exposure to them, it's very rare um, to have that type of an opportunity. So I would say that this is going to be the one time for our city and who knows how long where you've got an opportunity like that. So that would be one of the most unique things. And then Mike, what would you say stands out in San Diego? He was there with us as a consultant. Well, yeah, first I'd say that uh, you you do have a great answer to the last question, which is you guys give 100% of the ticket sales back, and they really, they really go out of their way to help, especially the out-of-towners. I think there's some, there's a London group up, up there that will definitely disagree with uh, that. They do a ton for the artists, yeah. so really try and help them out. Given uh, great places to stay, he gave me a great place to stay too <laughs> when I was there, uh, right by the beach. But um, uh, yeah, no, uh, what, what was really exciting about San Diego was it's his first in the first year. The, 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 the excitement in the community and the, the need for it. Uh, San Diego tends to be a conservative, for California, conservative town, and a lot of the young artists, like, it was watching a, an entire community fall in love with Fringe, and that was, that was just thrilling for me. So, um, it's just a, a, a wonderful community vibe. Everybody you know, feels connected and, and feels like they're working together at the same goal. Even though they're all doing their own own shows, they're all a family. It really felt like a family. There, so. I have to say one thing too. Uh, in preparation for our festival, I've traveled all over the place going to all these different festivals to see what the successful models are uh, and what will be useful for us in our city. And one of the things that I've noticed at a bunch of the different uh, festivals in the United States is that they get an extra layer of attention because it's so fantastic for um, some of the states to hear the accents. It might seem sound silly to you guys, but it's true. And they just love it and they eat it up. A <laughs> layer of talent, too. So they got a lot, a lot of attention. Do you want to speak to that at all? Um, well, yeah, just to kind of but wait, before you go on, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is not just for my festival, but for many different festivals in the States. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just about the press and stuff, I mean, just being from the UK, we kind of had that added thing, but we weren't from the UK, so there was just that spark of interest. We had like a bunch of press come to the shows, which thankfully for us gave us really great reviews, which as a young company was obviously like really, really fantastic. And also, just to touch on what Mike was saying as well about the kind of community feeling. Obviously we're kind of from outside the initial San Diego community but we really really felt part of that and having the Fringe Central meeting all the other artists kind of <coughs> like going to see their shows then and seeing our shows but also meeting them in a social context and also meeting the press in a social context. I love the press mixer where you can show a little bit of your show which was just a really really great idea. You can see little snippets of shows you want to see. You get a chance to kind of get the press really interested in not in you because of like the art that you do as well, and um, that was really, really great, and we, yeah, we had a really great time, we thought it would be a part of the kind of San Diego theatre vibe, which was really great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Two parts, uh, first of all, obviously the unique thing about this festival is that it is the unique Prince Festival, and uh, mm -hmm. the second thing, and it's not unique over all these festivals, because uh, I think, again, we're going to go for something that you might not necessarily know, because um, it's a kind of in-house secret, and um, the staff in our organisation are incredible. 
Anyone who works in festival and events management wants to work for the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, you get it on your CV, which means anytime we advertise a job, we have at least 200 people trying to get it. We handpick these people. Um, honestly, the top 30% of those applications are all in their own way probably overqualified for it, but here, for the experience, so what you get is you get really, really experienced people with great care. Um, our year-round staff has about 400 years experience of this thing between them. <laughs> and so people genuinely love it. And we have one of the lowest staff turnovers in Edinburgh, I think. We, we've lost one member of staff in the last five years. And she's going to study in New York. <laughs> 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 but, you know, so, so, you know, people really want to stay here. Um, the job they're gold does, so what you get is you get really good care. Uh, I'll, I would say one thing that you won't get from our website uh, about our festival is that we are an amazing party town and party <laughs> festival. Like you come if you want to, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the bars may close a little early to 2, 2 a.m., but um, uh, there's always an after party at somebody's house with a pool and a hot tub. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Brighton doesn't have very many outdoor pools or hot tubs. We're very near, but very near London as well. So it, it means that you can you can use the fact that London's very near to, to take advantage of, of that. So a lot, a lot of the audience is local, but a lot of the audience also come um, come down from London um, for the day, and so that that's a good way of getting into um, that that market, which is the professional um, touring market. Um, and it's a, I suppose it's a, a, a cheaper alternative to um, doing a very long run at, at, uh, at, at, well, at Edinburgh. But it's also, a, it's also a, a, a festival that I think over 200 and around 250 shows um, in Edinburgh this year performed at Brighton um, beforehand. So there's a, there's a huge, huge crossover of, 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 of people coming to to do their to do their show to get those reviews before coming up to Edinburgh. Um, the, um, uh, what, the, the the audience in Brighton is also quite savvy as well. Um, they, they 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 get a lot of um, uh, London stuff and t international touring stuff coming as well. So you've got quite a quite a, um, a culturally knowledgeable audience come to see the shows too. We also do the um, uh, the, the workshops year round as well, which I forgot, and, and I can't get punished if I don't say it. Um, but yeah, but it's in Brighton. Yeah. It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to open up to questions quite soon. I mean, you can tweet them. You can tweet questions in if you hashtag FC Talks. Oh. FC Talks. But you are in the room, so you're probably <laughs> 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 you're shy. Um, But yeah, before before we open it up for you guys to ask them questions, I just really would love to know what inspires these people to run these festivals on behalf of the artists who are the most important people, of, as you'll agree, um, and and the performers. Um, what inspires you about Fringe? What's your motivation? It's so hard to do for these guys, but they love it, and I know they love it, because I know them all pretty well now, so, yeah, tell us, what's your inspiration? Uh, I was an actor when I was younger, and then uh, I ended up opening, opening a performing arts school, this is a little bit longer than I'm going to to be, um, uh, and then I got hired to uh, direct, choreograph, produce, and, um, so, much, so many of the projects were commercial projects, and um, I, I'm afraid of what I'm get, what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> I love seeing new things, and I'm not excited, and I hate saying it out loud, but I'm not excited about uh, recycling um, scripts and recycling things over and over and over. Do you guys know what I mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> It just, it, it's uh, too difficult to sit through 42nd Street one more time. <laughs> or in our town, there's been numerous productions of Rents, and I go, why? Yeah. <laughs> so setting up this platform and seeing all these new ideas and new, um, 
new pieces of art is so exciting for me. And um, I get more joy, personally, setting up the platform for others than doing my own projects. It's just so exciting to me. Um, and that's what um, truly inspires me. Yeah, I'm the same. I love artists. I love working with artists. It's really simple. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was involved in Edinburgh Fringe for about 15 years um, and I got pretty inspired by that um, and uh, family reasons meant that I had to come and do things more down south and Brighton Fringe was there as an opportunity and it, it's, it's a really exciting Fringe Festival um, because it's quite new, relatively speaking um, and there's lots of opportunities there to happen, to do all of the things that you're talking about to bring new work, to try out new things um, and to, to go into the unknown. <laughs> um, yeah, what initially inspired me to, to start the Amsterdam Fringe was the whole idea that uh, everybody thinks Amsterdam is like this edgy place where um, everything is like, yeah, hey, marijuana. Um, <laughs> struggling in little theatres, not getting reviews, not getting more opportunities, uh, which were doing really interesting, edgy work, and were really like trying to push the boundaries, also push the boundaries of the city. Because um, Amsterdam is nice, but it's also got a sh lot of rules. Um, so uh, we are very proud that, except for last year, every year an artist gets arrested, and I have to get the artist <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, you're proud that they get arrested? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 it is, it is, it, it, it is they get arrested because they uh, they don't break the law, but police thinks they are, you know, not within, like Amanda Palmer drinking a beer yeah. at the dam square, got arrested while junks are shooting up behind her. I was like, <laughs> that's that's hypocr hypocritical. Yeah. yeah. So we like to test those kind of things. It's not about, you know, uh, and they always get out, and it's always, you know. <laughs> I'm an expert now. Um, so I, I, I like the edgy stuff. I like the new ideas, and I get so excited when artists that, you know, usually that just got started up, and they win an award at the Amsterdam Fringe Festival, and I run into them half a year later on the street, and they go like, shit, I just, I just, got work all the time and I get invites everywhere and all these doors are opening up and I actually can do what I love. And that's like, for me, then I go like, yeah. <laughs> So I love that, I love that. There's that incredible, incredible moment. I get that a lot this time of the month uh, when I'm out in the streets and stuff and seeing people where you've met people like two years before to talk about yeah. potentially coming and they're here having mm. the time of their fucking lives. Yeah. Yeah. Having a great time. Most of them, some are in my office crying. <laughs> <laughs> but there is something really lovely and tangible about the success that artists yeah. can get through yeah. the festivals. Great. Yeah. Uh, well, I started out, I'm, I'm actually a, a theater artist, actor, director um, by trade. And I started out with Fringe when I was at university in 1997. I did my first Fringe festival. And it really, what Fringe did for me is what excites me about doing the festival. And that's, it made me a much better artist, an artist with my own voice. And gave me an opportunity to do the work that I wanted to do the way I wanted to do it. Not just doing, getting cast in Oklahoma at my college. It's, you know, doing whatever work I want to do, uh, the way I want to do it. And, and that's just seeing, seeing artists able to take chances, break boundaries, as Annika said, I mean, really stretch out their art and um, 
and express themselves creatively with no bounds, mm -hmm. with no one saying, no, you can't do that, or no, you should try it this way. No, no, no. Let them do their, their art the way they want to do it. And that passion that comes along with that uh, ability to create your own thing uh, is unparalleled in any other uh, place but Fringe. So that's, that's what makes me love it. Well, I guess I can sum my favorite part of, of the festival and, and traveling and seeing other festivals is, is just saying community. Because it, the Fringe Festival, um, I get the greatest joy at the end of the night, at midnight, one in the morning, going out to the beer tent and, mm -hmm. and getting a beer and sitting down. And you're sitting next to an artist who's talking to a patron who's bumming a cigarette from the food vendor and we're just we're just all there for the same thing and you don't get that anywhere else especially in Orlando because Orlando is the world of theme parks and you can't say fuck and, you, know, you, can, you can come to the fringe and just be yourself um, USA today um, it's one of my favorite quotes is the, um, the Orlando fringe um, is a place where you can rub um, elbows with beatniks and bankers and everyone in between. And to me, that's my favorite part. Um, no one is judged, and you can just be yourself. Um, so, so that's my that's my favorite part. Yes, um, I was uh, inside a field environment. I still am inside it, and I would like to. I didn't like a lot of things, so. Maybe the fringe for me is something that helped me to keep to support the other environment in Italy and try to change the things that did don't work. I mean, and so and then of course it's passion, it's fun, and uh, it's something I care a lot. Um, that's why. Feeling a bit emotional after all that. Yeah. <laughs> that was very beautiful. What's your answer, Holly? What's my answer? Well, for me, um, it's the connections that I see happening through facilitation, actually. And it, you're providing a platform. And actually, you, when I come back every year, like Barry said, you hear people, but within festivals who have met each other, and then exchanges are happening. And people have come to the sessions thinking, you know what, my fringe time is up, I've performed. <coughs> here five times now, and, and then they come back the next week and said, you know, we came to your session, and now we've been here and here and here in our shows, and we've been <coughs> producers, and we've gone there and there. Um, and, and that, for me, to, to elevate people's opportunities and development um, is, is, is so beautiful to watch, and it doesn't matter how hard you work, you always get the rewards through, through seeing how people continue on. I think, you know, having all these guys together is amazing. I just, and thank I'm you for bringing that here.